Hey everybody, uh, Common Folk Games here. Um, Try to build a little bit of a following. I realized by talking to my wife and some other people that there's a lot of dads that play Yu-Gi-Oh and even some people that are in like middle school and high school that just don't have the budget for more expensive cards. And uh, I generally don't like playing meta. And uh, so I try to play some either older meta uh, that from years past that people don't expect or I play the, the cards that everybody calls garbage because I think that they're good. Konami won't print cards generally unless they're semi-decent in some strategies. Um, there, this was a requested combo video. People ask me all the time, why do you play Melfi's? Why is it good? Why do you keep topping with Melfi's? Why don't you play Sprite or Tri Brigade? My answer is generally it's expensive to play um, Sprite with blues being as high as they are and Tri Brigade engine being expensive with Shurig and all that. So this is my take on uh, Melfi's. I'll explain the combos afterwards. This is my updated deck pro profile picture or uh, deck video. Let's get started. Um, three Wally, best Melfi currently uh, in print. I'll explain combos with him later. Three Puppies, two Caddies, two Kalantosas. Uh, it's not a Melfi, it might as well be, but you get a lot of recursion with him, you get a lot of destruction with him. And uh, he gets you out a lot of jams. For my one ofs, I play the one penny, the one fenny, the one pony, and the other honorary, Hoppier Squadron. Um, the reason I went with one Hoppier and one penny instead of two pennies is sometimes um, you want to be able to target something to get it off the field really quickly. Penny doesn't have that ability, it has to use your hand. Sometimes you don't have that hand, and so Hoppier will get you out of that moment. Um, for combos, the reason I really enjoy this deck is very similar to um, the Evil Twins. You really only need two cards to really combo off, whether it be the Wally or whatever else. But these are the starters. You want to see at least one of these in your opening hands. Um, Nimble Beaver will get you going. Deep Sea Diva will. Rescue Cat will. And Obedient Schooled will. Um, I'll explain more combos specifically with each with each of these cards in a minute and it'll all make sense uh the one uh hide and seek grind game with this deck is unreal um whether you're going full combo and you're destroying half of their board making them discard cards and then afterwards you have like one or two cards in hand and you just recycle all your resources and bring it back whether you're shuffling calentosa back in or your penny or whatever you need back in the deck to keep Wally alive, that's your card. Um, for hand traps, I'm going with the three impermanence, three draw and lock because draw and lock is the best hand trap currently of the format. Three Valor, three Ash Blossom. I've dabbled with Ash. Ash bounces in and out of this deck profile actually quite a bit, whether it be ogres or whatever, and it'll make sense when I show you the side deck. And the reason I play this, three Iris Sword Souls. Um, they bounce in price. I got mine pretty cheap. Um, but there's just so many ways to get Iris Sword Soul out in this deck. And of course, you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh! without the one called by the grave. For the side deck, currently, I am running three MSTs. Um... I've had the secret rares forever, and they're really near and dear to my heart. Uh, Runic is a deck. A lot of decks are using back row stuff nowadays, and having the one of MST when you need it is really, really clutch. Feel free to change it out if you have a Harpy's Feather Duster or Lightning Storms or whatever you got if you have them. Um, Budget-friendly, though, MST. Uh, Phantasmaze. I remember when this card first came out. It was so overpriced. Um... I wanted to turn. I won second place. I think it was two or three weeks ago, dropping a Phantasmi on a guy, and he couldn't believe what Phantasmi did. It's really good to shuffle cards. So you can draw your two cards, and then you can shuffle one. And then if they try to target, it's good targeting protection. Uh, the three ogres. Ooh, sorry, three ogres, three shifters, because tear is still a thing. Um, Occasionally you'll come across it, and then three Nibiru. You can't really go wrong by siding Nibiru. That's it for the side deck. I'll show you the extra deck now. Um, so this, the extra deck, if you have the money, you can go into some of the newer cards. I don't have them. I will explain those combos 
uh, for those of you who have that type of money. This extra deck works fine for me the way it is currently. Uh, if you want to go out and spend the money on the Excel Synchro, um, Baron de Fleur, or Satellite Warrior. Satellite Warrior is pretty budget. Uh, the Excel Synchro, st or Stardust Synchro, will cost you a little bit just because it's brand new, but over time, when less people play it, it'll drop. Uh, I play the two Melfi of the Forest, the one Joyous Melfi's. I only run Joyous Melfi's at one. I tried two. I never used two. I, I can never summon more than one in a game unless it bounces and then I summon it back. Uh, I have two Ronins because it's non-targeting. It has its own battle and card effect destruction protection. Um, if they have a really big monster, I've won games where I've gone like full combo. They drop into Biru. I have this giant token with like eight, nine, ten thousand attack, and then I summon Ronin, make another token that that same attack value, and then I just beat stick over them with it. Uh, Centauria, really good removal without destruction, perfect for Mirror Jade p problems, Dragoon problems, and other things. Uh, the Zeus combo, Zeus has gone down in price. Um, I have the Ultra. You can swap it out for anything else you want. The one Mary Melfi's. Um, I'm still running the three Heralds. You can run more Mary Melfi's, or when I explain the Stardust combo, um, feel free to swap it out for the Excel and Satellite, two of them at least. You need the one Desert Locust, which is super cheap. Thank you for the common reprint. Uh, Stardust for that combo, and I run the Draco Berserker because it was cheap. Okay, so for combos. Like I said earlier, you can do it with just about any of these cards. If you open one of any of these three cards, you have full combo. Nimble Beaver, Obedient School, Rescue Cat, or Deep Sea Diva. Um, they all summon more than one monster that's level two. Um, the XYZ in this deck, Melfi of the Forest, um, only requires that you have two level two monsters on the field. All of these summon level two monsters. So it's really easy to activate any of them. Nimble Beaver will summon Nimble Beaver, Overlay. Will be in school, will summon three. Overlay, Rescue Cat summons two. Overlay and Deep Sea Diva also does the same. Now, once you have Melfi of the Forest, this is your one card combo, you are going to remove a material and add Wally. And the reason why Wally is so important, I will explain momentarily. Um, I will get to that because as important as Wally is, I need to explain why I'm playing the Iris Sword Souls. Because everybody's always like, why is that in your deck? You're playing Melfi's. Why are you playing Iris Sword Soul? Melfi of the Forest targets a monster and it cannot attack and it has its effects negated permanent. If Melfi of the Forest dies, the effect stays. Iris says that if your opponent or you control a monster that has its effects negated, it summons for free. So Melfi of the Forest will allow you to summon Iris of the Forest. Uh, Iris the Sword Soul. Um, your Veilers, the three Veilers I have, the three Imperms also work. Rescue Cat also works. So if I normal summon Rescue Cat, and let's say I use Rescue Cat, and I tribute it, and I summon Melfi, Wally, and Nimble Beaver. I control two monsters that have their effects negated due to Rescue Cat. I can summon Iris Sword Soul. Super, super nice. Okay, so... The Melfi combo that everybody wants to know about. You need a single Wally to do it. That's why this card's so important. So Wally will only activate its effects. All the Melfis, regardless of if you can use their abilities, will bounce to hand. Um, if somebody normal summons or special summons and you go activate Melfi, you are not required to use the second effect, whether it's Doggy to summon, Caddy to search, Wally to summon two, Penny, any of them. They, the, the, there is no cost aside from bouncing, but if they negate you, obviously it's not really a cost. Um, so let's say I summon Melfi, Wally, and they summon a monster. Wally's gonna bounce to hand and summon two Melfis with different names. You are going to summon Puppy, 
and caddy. So this is your line. Alfie Wally into caddy and puppy. Most people summon more than one time in one turn. That's why summon limits a card. So let's say they summon again. You're gonna go caddy one, puppy two. Puppy two. You're gonna Calentosa. Caddy is gonna search you Penny. is gonna pop whatever you want. Spell, trap, monster, it doesn't matter. Um, Penny will be in hand. At any point in time you can do this because Penny is a quick effect. Penny's effect is as long as you've done it this turn. Penny does not have to be in your hand when the monster's return. Just ha has to have happened during the turn in general. Um, you can activate Penny, summon Penny. You will synchro using the caddy and the puppy from hand. That's important. You are going to then summon Desert Locust. Desert Locust will then make your opponent discard a card. Then you can quick effect Locust synchro for eight. Now, if you have the cards, you would go into Excel Synchro, uh, Excel Stardust Synchro Dragon, or whatever it's called. Um, we're just gonna proxy for right now with a uh, Herald. Um, its effect is special summon a level two or lower tuner from your grave. You have a Penny. You can summon out Penny. Its effect is then to quick effect, tribute itself off to summon Stardust, and then immediately Synchro. You'll synchro into Satellite, Warrior, or Baron de Fleur. Um, here's the, the pros and the cons. That monster is unaffected by activated effects. So if it is not an activated effect, it will affect that monster. Satellite will destroy three different cards because you control three synchro monsters in the graveyard, and then it'll gain a thousand for each. So optimally, you should be at 5,500 attack unaffected by activated effects, and if he's destroyed, he summons up to three um, Stardust monsters. So Stardust Dragon and Stardust Excel will come back out if he's destroyed. And he keeps the five, he keeps the the attack stat of 5,500 permanent, unless he's impermed, veilered, whatever. Um, Baron Fleur is nice because it's a negate, and he's at 3,000, so on and so forth. Um, and you still have the Wally in hand, mind you. So you'll still have the, the satellite, you still have the Wally in hand. You've not only popped a card from Kalantosa, you've made them discard a card from the Desert Locust, and you've popped three more cards. So you've destroyed four cards, made them discard a card for five, and if they manage to destroy a 5,500 unaffected by activated effect card, you get Stardust Dragon and Stardust Excel out. Now, if you do go the Baron, obviously you'll have the Negate and the Pop on your turn. Um, the other thing you can do, the Ad Emancipator um, Water Dragon monster, you can Synchro using Desert Locust and Kalantosa to go into it. Penny is a water type, so you'll have the Negate for spells if you want. That's a good choice. Um, currently, I do not have the Excel, and I don't have the Ad Emancipator, so I'm running the Draco and the Stardust. Um, it's really player's choice. Draco's nice because he has the banish, and I found that playing against numerous things. Um, when there was zone lock going on, it was very helpful. Um, even playing against tier elements, banishing cards is always useful, as you'll find out if you play it at any of your locals. Uh, that's pretty much it for the deck profile. Um, Feel free to like, comment, tell your friends. Um, I'm hoping to post more deck profiles and get a little bit more active in the community. Um, I appreciate your help. Uh, please comment, tell me what you would like to see. I have a couple more deck profiles that I would like to get out there. Um, you guys can go ahead and say what you want. Uh, I'm working on Fire Fists right now. I got Necroz, I have the Noble Knights that I've updated. I have a True Draco deck that I have built. I have a Pure Dogmatica deck that I've got running. I have a Blackwing Raid Raptor deck that I've won numerous tournaments with. Um, yeah, just comment in the uh, comment section. Have good luck at your locals.